you were just saying now about the plans we, we get from, from architects and, and I suppose Alex for you when you know you've had meetings and mm. you've gone out they've given you plans or they've sent us plans what plans do we have to put in to the statement of heritage impact ultimately the set of plans which are issued as part of the DA mm -hmm. will should be included in our report but saying that as is the will of architects, they would probably leave that to the very last minute before finalising mm. these reports mm. and then send us a set and expect the report to be updated by the next day. Right. So in order to preempt that situation, we try to, and we can, I think, to a certain degree, construct our report based on a set of draft or preliminary plans mm. with the understanding that they be tweaked, mm. as we discussed earlier. If they are going to do a wholesale design change, then it would require a lot more work and, and actually I try to, to help the report writers get a list of changes from mm. the architect in bullet points. So when, when we get the plans from an architect, mm. does it have the word like draft on it or preliminary um, on it or is so it usually yeah. d just down the bottom? Down the bottom, it, it wouldn't have a watermark, it would have a preliminary issue or draft issue. Okay, so could we not put them in and cut that out? No, you can't alter an architect's drawing. No, 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 no. We don't put the footer in. I'm saying. I think it's what sometimes they actually change the colouring and um, the image mm. quite significantly. So, so they're not actually changing the structure of the building or right. changing the, how they're developing, but they're changing the finished product that they're going to give to council. I like this section, section five, to have the same drawings that are given to council mm. to be included in this plan, so that I can show that I have assessed. Um, exactly what council is receiving. Yeah. Al although we, we carry a copy of the plans in our document, they're really just to reinforce the fact that we, re we based our assessment on those plans and we must reference the fact that the date of the plans that we received were August 2012, these were the DA application plans. But in terms of actually the physical uh, thing which occurs on the sheet, council will not study that and base anything upon what they read in their plans and they shouldn't either mm. so really they're just a representation mm. of but, what we have physically but what's in it for us to put in the non-final set what's in it for us um, only, only potentially to base our uh, report on uh, well only potentially somebody complaining that they're not the right ones oh no no we, we, sh we would never we would never no. issue a report with a set of draft plans but what what invariably happens is you get continually changing versions of plans. So mm. even if you know that you've received 98% complete architecturals and you then say to the architect, right, we're going to now complete the report and you do that, then you know you get a situation where a week later they issue new sets of plans. Mm. And we don't even yeah. know. And, and we don't even know. You can just mm. add a, a notation that's got nothing to do with anything that you would have done in your report, mm. but the, the plans are no longer... It's just it's very time-consuming to take mm. the old ones up. So now we, we not fine them, but we effectively charge extra. So we say, this there will be one assessment based on the drawings that you give us as being the, the version upon which we are to do our assessment. Mm. And if there's any change, then we're going to have to charge you but extra. But do we need to... Have they do, we say they'll give us another set of plans, but they won't necessarily redate them. So you can't yeah, be able to what's bad. actually changed. Mm. Um, that I think is quite annoying because yeah. we're trying to cross-reference our report to the most recent version of the plans and all we really have is an email with another date on it mm. with plans that to all intents and purposes apart from the colouring are the same as the last ones mm. and it, it makes us very hard to be precise in working out what's changed. Mm. There is, there should be on a lot of them automatically puts um, on the CAD um, just puts plotted date which might be separate to the day in the title box. Mm. Un unfortunately, that's beyond our control. We can't police every architect's mm. sort of issue systems. We can be aware of it and we could probably inform them, but essentially it's beyond our control. It's their, um, their problem with their own issue systems. They should have a new date and a new issue number for each set of plans they issue us. And if they don't, then we should make them aware of it, but really it's beyond our control. Mm, I think it's beyond our control. Unfortunately, mm. but it causes a lot of pain. Ultimately, it is beyond our control. Mm. So, Alex, do you think that we're protected by saying specific details of the existing site and the proposed development are shown in the following drawings provided by 
X dated Y. Yeah, I think we could put something like that, or we could put something like received by Rappaport dated XXX. Okay. Or should we use the date on the correspondence as well as the issue date of the plan? I think perhaps we could maybe go towards more of when we receive the plans rather than the plans dated on the drawings. As as Stephanie noted, sometimes they do not update them on their own plans. Yeah, I think so, we should say yeah. um, shown in the following drawings provided by X dated Y and received by Rappaport on. Perhaps X. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? It does cover us.